Disclaimer, products provided by Nintendo. The following review was written and reviewed by Nintendan, who also provided footage for this honest review. I am just voicing the script that he wrote as he has reached a further point in the game. When it comes to Animal Crossing, my love for the series can't be beaten. Since the first Western release on the Nintendo GameCube, I was amazed by all the little things I could do. The games I played most, Wild World and New Leaf, are games I adored for their lifespan. So much so that I couldn't stop thinking about them even when I turned the games off for the day. New Leaf felt like the final stop of Animal Crossing's traditional format, giving us no further point of where the game could carry on from. The task ahead for the developers was to create something that took gameplay in a new direction. Something that both newcomers and veterans could get behind. The aptly named Animal Crossing New Horizons manages to hit all of those important notes even if it does hit some snags along the way. In Animal Crossing New Horizons, a player avatar heads off for one of the many deserted islands. Tom Nook helps you through the game's opening days. With a tent and your brand new Nook phone at the ready, you are going to try and make the best of things. I quickly realized how fast the opening moments of New Horizons move along. The tutorial, which is more guided than previous entries, is rather swift. You find places to plop the tents down, collect some materials, and then finally name your island. The player and their new friends have a big celebration, after which the regular gameplay starts to take shape. Your first big task, getting 5,000 Nook miles to pay off the getaway package, isn't as big a task as it might seem. The level of entry is kept low and helps the player to ease in. The way you approach these Nook mile tasks is left completely in your hands. You can interact with the islanders, catch a bunch of fish, or perhaps do some DIY crafting. The space you can move about in is restricted until you get a true feel for New Horizons. It does take a little while longer before you get access to any of the crucial tools. In the first number of days, you get tasks to complete that will broaden your horizons on the island. In the early goings, you are never left without direction. I think that is what strikes me most about Animal Crossing New Horizons. In the beginning, there is always a task that you're made aware of, whereas the second half of my time on the island is currently being spent raising the island's morale. You do that by attracting new villagers through building infrastructure, getting the campsite, creating greenery and putting furniture items everywhere. Quickly, I found myself invested in creating zones of flowers and fencing, which I hope is something others get invested into as well. All of these proceedings created a different flow when it comes to the gameplay. Outside of the usual tasks like looking for fossils and discussing matters with villagers, I found myself heavily invested in enriching the town's experience. One way of doing that is clearing as many Nook Mile tasks as you can. When you pay off the getaway package, you get access to Nook Miles Plus, which gives you five tasks at random. By completing one, another option gets added to the mix. In the moments that I felt everything was done for the day, these tasks reeled me back in and kept me playing easily for another hour. They force you to take note of crafting, customization, or seeing what your animal friends are doing. You are never left without a goal in mind. That being said, Animal Crossing New Horizons doesn't explain everything. When it comes to upgrading your town or getting new services added, it leaves you in the dark a lot. For example, it took several visits at Mabel's Taylor Plaza shop until she brought up the idea of setting up a full Able Sisters shop. During my entire review period, I've only seen a handful of special characters, and that is on two different save files. It turns out that there aren't many special characters in general, at least in the game's current state. I found that situation to be a bit off as those really make the game shine further. Another point of slight irritation is how often tools break. While I totally expected the flimsy tools to break quickly, I was surprised by how regular tools are impacted as well. As I like to tend to flowers a lot, the moment my regular watering can broke, I was just shocked. Outside of the ladder and vaulting pole, no tool is safe from wear and tear. You will run into it quickly if you are hunting for a specific creature and constantly rely to catch as much as possible. Now, this isn't the end of the world as you can remake them, but I'd rather use those materials to enhance my town. It is a bit of a bummer. When it comes to Animal Crossing's day-to-day -day moments, I never stopped enjoying myself. Every day I would walk through town, catch fish and bugs, talk to the villagers, and look around for something to take care of. With the DIY recipes and the materials needed on that front, there was an urgency to collect as much as you possibly can. I would find myself using a flimsy axe for wood, hitting my shovel against rocks, or removing potential weeds. Everything counted this time to a common goal which made the collector inside of me go crazy. Every time a DIY recipe was found or given to me, I wanted to go and make the item in question. Sometimes do hand something fun to a villager or 
friend, other times to place it inside my house or my town. While the system depends on what you want out of Animal Crossing, I was happy to keep my bells in my pocket and use them for the more serious matters. When it comes to spending money, there is a larger selection of options from an early point in the game. You can purchase items in the resident services building as well as through the Nook Terminal, which offers a variety of items regardless of the stores that are in your town. Later on, however, the Able Sisters and Nook's Cranny join the mixture. I really appreciate the effort put into the Able Sisters, the dressing room at the right that allows you to go through all the options and see how they suit your character. Nook's Cranny has a similar setup with a few items on display, plus more available in a cabinet. Something I was very impressed by is that you have multiple wallpaper and flooring options to choose from. Sadly, I haven't seen any Nintendo-related items in the game, which is how I really want to improve my island. The Island Designer application is likely my highlight of Animal Crossing New Horizons. Once you reach a certain point in the game, you are basically able to do three things. Crafting waterways and land, laying down paths, and removing and expanding cliffs. In my humble opinion, this is one of those crucial building blocks that will keep me playing for a long time. Even quickly after obtaining the functionality, I found myself creating clusters where villagers could live, enjoy, and breathe in nature. The only knock against Island Designer is that it takes time. You really have to go piece by piece and slowly get the job done. Animal Crossing New Horizons looks absolutely stunning. The subtle things like the tree leaves moving in the wind, the weeds jittering ever so slightly, and the far more expressive characters all captured my attention. Everything about Animal Crossing New Horizons is colourful and really pops right in front of you. Regardless of how you play and experience the title, it has an incredibly sharp eye for detail. The villagers in particular really made me smile as they have more animations, fun dialogues, and roam more freely across the town. You can even see them doing more aerobics, fishing, or just enjoying their life on the island overall. They also have full-on outfits now, which make them even more blend in. What blends in well too is the music. While in the opening days a variety of music is limited, this increases once the game opens up. Hourly music starts to return, and with the music tracks being purchasable as an item early on, you can have different zones with their own tracks. A fun way to experience Animal Crossing is by playing with others. New Horizons lets you play locally and online with up to 8 people. In all of these different kinds of setups, I found the experience I had to be rather pleasant. Obviously, there might be a waiting line to enter buildings and the like, but this isn't something you can overcome. That being said, my problem with the online is that you're almost forced to start using dodo codes. When I had my gates open, people wouldn't stop coming in. Every time someone enters or leaves, you are stuck in a cutscene that takes honestly forever. The game loads, save, and then carries on where it left off. Considering how the rest of the game runs, I'm a little surprised on this front. Animal Crossing New Horizons is a step towards a new path. Unlike the previous games in the series, we don't know anything future-wise right at this moment. Many events have been stripped out in favour of a wait-and-see approach. While I can get behind that idea, there is an uncertainty of its future endpoint. That being said, I can't understate how great this game has come together. There are shortcomings, absolutely, but the flow is much better than anything that came before it. I was never left without something to do, and the world would constantly evolve around me. Even after all these years, there is a daily routine that I hold dear, and makes me adore the various elements that glue this game together. And there you have it, our common, brutally honest review of Animal Crossing New Horizons. No rating score this time around, but if we were to rate it, we would probably mark it somewhere between 85 and 90 out of 100. It is absolutely the best Nintendo Switch game that I, Conrad, will not play as it is simply too addictive and productivity ruining for me. What do I mean by that? The fact that Animal Crossing New Horizons will consume you and your time great during these times, but what many of us tend to forget is that this is a franchise that requires you to come back on a regular day-to-day -day basis to get the most out of the game. Personally, this means that Animal Crossing New Horizons is not for me, as it takes too much time out of my in-real-life commitments to justify the play value of several weeks, months, and especially years. Naturally, time traveling is an option in this regard, but it also ruins the flow of time that makes the game so unique and enjoyable. Just like in real life, building your dream island takes time, in more ways than one. And in this Animal Crossing title, it's all up to you, as what Tom Nook offers you is literally a deserted island and some tools where it is easily to take real life weeks before your island reaches the standards that pleases you or to unlock the island builder feature which again will consume your time and hunt for resources even further. The work and maintenance of the island never ends and will easily consume big chunks of your day with two hour and even longer sessions of play. In other words, this game is very close to endless as every island will be different as we are all different individuals and don't want to have an island that is worse than our friends. 
I know this might be rambling at the end of a precise review, but I just wanted to state that Animal Crossing New Horizons isn't your typical Breath of the Wild, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Super Mario Odyssey or even Fire Emblem game that you finish and might even complete in the matter of a week, two or at the most a few months. Instead, it is a gorgeous and addictive experience that impacts your real life schedule for years to come. The question is if you're up for a similar commitment to owning a dog in real life. If the answer is yes, then I have good news for you, as we are giving away a digital copy of Animal Crossing New Horizons this week. The only thing you need to do to enter is like this video, be subscribed to the channel, press that notification bell and follow us on twitter.com slash commonrealm at commonrealm and comment to the tweet I will be posting right after this video goes up. The winner will be selected on April 1st and if you win and already have Animal Crossing, then you can still get $60 from me for a different game or some tasty pizzas while you enjoy Animal Crossing at home. We're getting close to 250,000 subscribers here on YouTube and 10,000 followers on Twitter, so let's make an awesome Nintendo Switch and Animal Crossing push. Anyway, that was all for this video and a big thanks once again to Nintendan for greatly helping us out with this review. Be sure to also check out his Twitter at Nintendo. Until the next Brutally Honest review and the videos, why not check out one of these two awesome videos.